Hey, it's Mr. Dang, and you're going to want to see this. I'm going to run a SQL query. Select everything from my database where the number equals 4001. Start it. And boom, I got 61 records. Now see what happens when I remove that. Uh, condition and I just get everything stand by this is exciting because you can now use your SQL table uh, you can use power apps as a front end for your SQL table that's a game changer all right here it comes it's going to be pulling up 16,799 records and you couldn't do that before Here's the big idea. You have your Power App. Inside, you have a text input field where you could type any query, push a button to initiate. In Flow, it'll run that SQL query. Then you'll return a response. If it's successful, it'll send that array back into Power Apps. Let's get started by creating our flow. I'll be making one from scratch. Uh, since we're using Power Apps, I'll start with the Power Apps trigger. So I'll do a search for Power Apps. Before I get to the step of SQL, I'm going to be using a variable to store the SQL query that I type in from Power Apps. So I'll do a search for a variable. Initialize variable simply means I'm going to be defining what this variable is. I'll call it SQL query. I'll set it to a string because it's text. And it's going to take what I uh, give it in Power Apps. Now is where I use my SQL connector. And I'll be using the one for uh, uh, calling a query. The query parameters. It's going to be this variable. Now I could actually set it directly to ask in Power Apps, but I like to call out variables more explicitly. Finally, I'm going to be using uh, this new connector called request response. If you do a search for request, uh, you will be able to see it at the bottom. So request response. Here's where uh, things get a little bit more technical. I will go ahead and save what I have so far. Okay. And I'm going to run a test because in order for this to work, this response step, it needs to know what kind of columns am I going to be receiving? What kind of information am I going to be getting from this? So that it can send it back. Using the test function, uh, I'll be able to give it some sample data, and it could create a schema based on that sample data. It'll, it'll have a better idea of the skeletal structure of the data it's receiving. Okay, the variable here is the SQL, um, uh, the SQL query. So I'm just going to make a query that will return just a few records. I'm going to select everything from my table where the number equals 2040. This will return two records for me, which is enough for a sample. I'll click done. I'm going to go into this step where I executed the SQL query, and I'm going to look at the body. From the body, I'm going to copy everything from table one. Now I'm ignoring this first part because the table begins with this, uh, this first bracket, and it's going to end with the other bracket down here. Again, I ignored these last two brackets because they referred to these uh, parts up here. I'll be using that, and I'm going to re-edit this, uh, this flow. At the bottom of the response action, 
you'll see it says use sample payload to generate schema. This simply means we're going to be using some sample data to give this a skeleton of what kind of data to expect. I paste in what I had copied earlier. I double check this, I'll just give it zero uh, so that it could return as a, a, a number. Sometimes SQL might not understand it as well. And then this balance here, I'll just give it a number. Uh, this is also going to be a number, so I'm just double checking things. Okay, now everything else lines up. I'll click done, and it automatically gives me a skeleton of what to expect. It's going to be an array. Uh, there's going to be a column called bank ID that's a text string, and so on. I'm going to scroll down just to make sure everything has a type specified. Okay, I am ready. And you'll notice I didn't use a respond to power app step because this is going to be my response. Before we click save, we do need to give the response a body. We'll be using the results from the SQL query, but not just any parts of it. We want dot table one. And that's so that it goes directly to the results of the table. Let's give this uh, flow a descriptive name, get bank balance. Click save. And let's get inside our Power App to see how we could use it as the front end for a SQL Server. Inside my Power App, I've prepared this text input field where I'll be typing in a SQL query. Below that is my button that's going to be activating that query. So it runs this flow. Get bank balance is the name of it. Run is its command. The argument it takes is whatever's inside this text input field. Power apps or flow will run it, and then it'll return all of those records into this collection, which I've called test. That test collection is the is going to be inside this gallery, and uh, it's going to be returning just a few of them. So uh, let's do a quick query just to show you that this works, and you'll be off to try it on your own. I'm going to be doing a query where the number equals 4002. All right. So you can see, oh, it ran that pretty quickly. You can see that you could run the entire SQL language from within Power Apps, and that's powerful. I hope you enjoyed this video. Thanks for watching. If you'd like to see more interesting power apps, please subscribe.